What is going on, y'all? Robert Sykes, KetoSavage.com, welcoming you back to week 12 of this contest prep update series. So we got a lot to dive into today. This time we're going to be talking mostly about compositional changes via uh, in-body and caliper tests and also some manipulations I've been making with my protein, my fat, and my electrolytes. So let's dive right into it. We'll start with the, uh, I took some stats. Normally I do the calipers and um, you know, measurements on the same week that I do update opposing footage, but that didn't line up this past week. So I've got the updated measurements and caliper test for you. According to the tape measure on 620, my neck was 14.5 inches, shoulders were 47, chest was 41, biceps unflexed 14 and a half, flexed 16, belly button 31 and a half, hips 37 and a half, thigh 23 and three quarter and calves 15 and three quarter so everything is moving in the right direction there i'm maintaining girth where i want it and i'm losing it where i don't so happy to report that in regards to the caliper test measurement so for whatever reason my caliper test has always shown me to be very lean leaner than i actually believe i am to be um but as of june the 20th my caliper test had me clocking in at 6.35%. So if you can recall, the main goal of this um, prep is to basically become the leanest man alive, which I fully intend to do. That, I think, needs to be sub 4% via DEXA scan, because I'm going to hit sub 4% via caliper test in a matter of a few weeks, uh, which is lean for sure, but it's certainly not indicative of what my actual composition is. Um, so I love the caliper test. It's handy. You don't have to have any fancy setup. Um, I do have a nice pair of calipers and I've got my wife who can consistently measure me with it. So definitely take advantage of that as a protocol, but recognize that it may not be the most accurate for you depending on, you know, how you're measuring via calipers. So there's that. I've also been doing an in-body test every single week roughly as well. And my skeletal muscle is holding pretty steady at 88.6 pounds via the end body. And my fat mass is dropping. Uh, percent body fat is dropping as well. So it had me at 8.8% body fat as of 624. So definitely getting leaner from that standpoint. The test prior to that was 9.5%. And then I had a, a lower one at 84 But the end body is pretty volatile based off of hydration levels. Um, you know, your, your weight. So if you had just eaten, you want to be as consistent with all things as you possibly can be with any of these testing modalities, but the hydration level, hydration level is really going to impact what the in-body shows. So just be mindful of that. Let's dive into the macros here. So I've got the spreadsheet pulled up and I went ahead and added another column here with the week number because I'm, we're getting into the so many weeks here that I'm losing track of everything. So I've got week one, week two, et cetera, et cetera. So we scroll down to week 12, which is where we're at now. And I was, look at this. So I was just prior to this, I was 167.9, 167.9. This was the cruise here. So I dropped quite a bit of weight immediately post low carb cruise. And then this week it kind of started bumping up 170, 171.7, <clears throat> 170.4. And then it dropped down to 166.4, which is the new low of the prep thus far and then kind of back up again, 165.6, 167.8, 171.5. So what I've been doing lately is really getting aggressive with testing my electrolyte consumption, particularly my salt, my sodium, because I'm lean enough now, I think I'm probably about 9% body fat to be honest, uh, I'm lean enough now at 9% body fat to really be able to see how changes and manipulations in my electrolytes impacts how I feel, how my muscle bellies fill out, and what my level of vascularity and conditioning is. So if you don't get your electrolytes dialed in properly, you're going to retain a lot of excess fluid in your subcutaneous layer of skin, which is going to wash out a lot of the definition. Also, as you start restricting your caloric intake, you're going to need to supplement more electrolytes typically because you don't really have much storage on board of your body keeping that in the system. So I'm pretty much transitioning to real-time usage, like what I'm consuming my body is using in real time as I get leaner and leaner and leaner and consume less and less and less. As such, I start to crave sodium much, much more as I get leaner and start taking in fewer calories. So I've been really aggressive with the sodium intake these past few days, which is why you've seen this increase from the 165.6 
uh, which is the lowest I've hit so far to, you know, the 171.5 that I was at on Sunday of this week. Um, so it's it's been a little volatile there, but again, that's just because the electrolytes, so I'm not really worried about it because I've been hitting my macros perfectly. That's another thing. If you're experimenting with your electrolytes, obviously sodium is not going to be resulting in added fat tissue. So if I'm nailing my macros perfectly and I'm eating the same foods and I know my body responds well to those foods, then when I see manipulations or when I see an increase in weight due to electrolyte manipulations, I don't worry about it. It doesn't like trip me out and cause a bunch of anxiety because I know without a shadow of a doubt that it is simply electrolyte related. Now compare that to someone who is also manipulating your electrolytes at this point in the prep, but then eating different foods on a regular basis, uh, eating more of certain foods, less of certain foods, and just changing it up quite a bit. That would be a much better opportunity for them to worry about if the food is causing it because they can't remove that as a variable. I can totally remove that as a variable because I'm only manipulating my electrolytes when I see those massive fluctuations in my morning weigh-in. So there's a little tip for you there. I've been doing probably on the round, you know, 10 grams of salt, 10 grams of sodium a day, rather. Uh, so that's definitely on the higher end. I probably don't need quite that much, but I've been pushing the envelope to see what my body can handle on the higher level. Uh, so macros this week, I've got 160 grams of fat, 185 grams of protein, 15 grams of total carbs, which results in a 64.3% fat ratio. 64.3% of my total calories coming from dietary fat. As far as cardio goes, I did bump it up a little bit this week. I kept the the duration the same at 20 minutes, but I did, I did bump it up from level 12 to level 13. And I also have been getting quite a bit more steps in this week just in working around the house. So that's been nice. Uh, if you look at my weight trend here, you can kind of see how I've had a little bit more volatility with the weight because of those fluctuations in electrolytes. So again, totally normal and to be accounted for because I know what the cause is. So... Knowing what my macros are now, the 160 fat, 185 protein, 15 total carbs, let's take a look at the foods I'm consuming. So sad week for me in the sense that I had to remove the heavy cream from my coffee. So I had black coffee, which is just not my jam. Doesn't taste good to me at all, but that's what I did. Had either coffee or tea this week with no heavy cream. I had a banana muffin keto brick after my training session in the morning. Um, so... That is a higher fat brick than most, not by much, but by a little bit, um, a little bit low on the protein. And then most of my protein comes from the meal two. So the banana muffin brick was my first meal of the day post training. And then meal two was 10 whole eggs. So quite a few eggs, 14 ounces of ground venison cooked in a half a tablespoon of butter. Generally speaking, I don't ever recommend having a meal in which the grams of protein significantly exceed that of the dietary fat. In a maintenance phase, in a building phase, when you're consuming more calories, a good rule of thumb is to make sure that you have equal fat grams to protein or higher dietary fat than protein in the context of optimizing for a ketogenic state. However, since my macros are such that they are in this phase two of this journey in which I am increasing protein while simultaneously dropping fat to find my own unique protein threshold, my meal has had higher protein than dietary fat. Not optimal in the sense of, you know, just the day to day, but optimal in the sense of what I'm trying to accomplish with this prep right now. So keep that in mind. And I'll probably keep moving these numbers as such as we go through here, because I do like having my brick post-workout that's worked well. It's enough protein to stimulate muscle protein synthesis and enough dietary fat to give me a bump in energy and fuel the day until I get home for that second meal. Probably are going to be transitioning to an OMAD approach within the next few weeks as my calories drop. Uh, and then again, as far as the sodium goes, I had about seven packets of the LMNT packets. Those are about a thousand milligrams of sodium each. That does not count the salt that I add to my food, which is quite a bit. So the measured sodium here is 7,600, um, so I have no doubt that I'm hitting about 10,000 milligrams or 10 grams throughout the course of the day. Uh, and I'm nailing my macros perfectly, you know, 159.8 with a goal of 160 on the fat, 186.3 with a goal of 185 on the protein, and a little bit less total carbs than what it calls for here. So feeling pretty good about that. That's pretty much all I got for y'all as far as updates go this week. Um, I did get some of my blood work entered into Heads Up Health. I'm going to try and get updated lab panels drawn um, in about two weeks. 
So once I get those updated labs, I meant to do them more frequently, but it just kind of worked out such that it's been a little bit farther in between lab tests, but I'm gonna get updated labs within, within about two or three weeks or so. And then I'm also gonna get an updated DEXA scan from both the Hologic brand in the place I go to in Utah, uh, or Omaha rather, and then also uh, I'm going to go to the Little Rock, and which uses the GE brand DEXA. So I'll have both of those DEXA scans within the next few weeks as well. So some more stats coming y'all's way. Feeling good so far. I feel pretty good energy-wise. I feel there are times throughout the day where I do feel a little bit depleted. There are times throughout the day where I feel like I am running on E, so to speak. But then I just simply have a glass of water with electrolytes in it or keep my mind busy and then I am off the races and feeling great. Haven't seen any noticeable drop in strength whatsoever, which is really good. My sleep hasn't been impaired, which is also great. And I am feeling on top of the world for all intents and purposes. So feeling great. The prep is growing great thus far. And I'm most certainly leaning out day by day. Um, so all good things on the Western front here. Appreciate y'all checking in. Talk to you next time.